Hello, mountain bike friends. We have sifted through about a thousand questions you had for me, and I'm going to answer them in this video. Everything from bike knowledge to business bicycle industry questions to some inappropriate stuff, semi-inappropriate stuff, funny stuff, all sorts of things. So let's go. Mike Pernell asks, any insight on electronic Shimano drivetrain? I heard they applied for a new patent. I don't know anything about a new Shimano electronic drivetrain. However, I would absolutely speculate they're gonna come out with one because Shimano and SRAM have been copying each other's drivetrains more or less for the last 20 years or something. So since SRAM has a really good one, I would assume Shimano is gonna make a really good wireless electronic drivetrain. I guess they do have an electronic drivetrain, but not wireless. Uh, their patent, which was published on Pinkbike, I looked into it a little bit. Patent applications are really confusing and hard to understand, but from what I understood from that, it actually didn't have to do with the drivetrain. It had to do with correlating your dropper post position to your suspension. Which means if your dropper post was up, your suspension would be firm, and if your dropper post was down, your suspension would be open, which is actually a really good idea. However, that does mean you would need an electronic dropper post that's somehow linked to your electronic suspension, neither of which Shimano makes. So, I don't know. I think it's uh, probably maybe a moonshot for Shimano or something they could come out with next year or in 10 years. Who knows? We will see. But I'm sure they will come out with something cool to compete with SRAM's wireless electronic drivetrain soon. And now, before the next question, a quick magic trick. CJ asks, does Jeff have a safe word if the trail gets too gnarly? <laughs> of course I do. My safe word is Alberto Ornilles. Ornelas, I don't know how to say that. In a blind test, can you tell the difference between a carbon and an alloy bike? This question gets asked a lot and we've actually talked a lot about blind tests and they would be pretty interesting to make YouTube videos on because every rider has a very different perspective when it comes to how things feel and work on their mountain bike. And the more experienced you are and the more bikes you've ridden and the more different types of bikes you've ridden and the longer you've been riding, the more you can tell and nitpick these things and probably even do so if there was such a way to be blindfolded and ride a mountain bike simultaneously. Slam turned on. SRAM well, NX, NX, it's NX, it's SRAM NX, I can tell. Carbon and alloy, you can definitely tell. I shouldn't say you can definitely tell. I can tell because I've ridden a million different bikes. A lot of it really has to do with the sound. The feel is a little harder to tell, but there's a lot of things in the bike world that if you could truly ride blindfolded, a lot of people, I would speculate most novice riders, most riders would probably not tell a difference. The more experienced you are, if you're a pro rider, you've been riding a long time, you probably could tell a difference between things like that. So just factor that in and try different stuff, ride your friends' bikes, demo different bikes, try out different products. It'll give you a little bit of an idea of what actually feels different, what makes a meaningful difference rather than just a kind of difference that might be placebo effect in your head. Stunner number one, who happens to be my friend Matt, who works for the FBI, believe it or not. I, I think he's probably just making that up. That's what his story is. Uh, he asks, why haven't you allowed Stunner number one to be a guest mechanic for a day? Uh, here's a video of Matt uh, back in New Zealand in 2019 showing you how to wash your bike. Hey, this is Stunner number one here on the worldwide cycling trip to New Zealand, Rotorua. <laughs> Quick bike washing tip for after you shred the gnar. Take the hose, put it on high pressure, and spray that right into the pivots. <laughs> Best tire combo for most type of terrain, talking about trail slash all mountain slash enduro kind of riding. That entirely depends on you, your weight preferences, your traction preferences, your bike, and the actual dirt that you're riding on. We made an entire video about the best Maxxis tire combos, and a lot of people found that very helpful. The article that we also used to accompany that video, which is in the link below in the video description, uh, has this cool chart that we made, which you can see now, and that kind of talks about weight and traction um, and how they correlate and then different combos depending on what you want. So if you're really curious about more tire combos, watch that video. I really tried hard to demystify what really works well front and rear for various types of terrain and riding. Scotty Pink, is there a new kettle line upcoming? I remember hearing you say something about this in a previous video. 
Yes, there is, and it is now out. Uh, Kettle Mountain is the apparel brand we own, which I've said on YouTube 10,000 times. Uh, we've worked really hard over the last 12 months to design some pretty rad uh, apparel pieces that work on and off the bike and just general outdoor adventure travel wear, which you can see some photos of that now. Uh, please, please, please go to the link below in the video description or just go to Google and type in KETL and check out some of the stuff that we made. It is rad, we're really happy with it, and check it out. Can you do more podcasts? I listen to them every day. Uh, we we, yes, yes, we are trying to do more podcasts. Uh, we took over the MTB podcast from the original guys that were hosting it. Uh, once they got too busy with various things in life, uh, we took it over, uh, myself, Jared, and Liam. Uh, so it's now the MTB podcast presented and hosted by Worldwide Cyclery. Uh, it's been received really well. We've been having fun with it. We're just having trouble recording it on a consistent schedule, but we're trying to do more often. So if you have questions for the podcast, uh, go to the MTB podcast website, send us some questions, we'll answer questions, we'll talk about various mountain bike related things. And we also have an MTB podcast YouTube channel where we film the recorded podcast episodes and put those on there. So yeah, we are working on that. So for all you podcast listeners, type in MTB podcast and subscribe. Joel Akeny asks, What is the airspeed of an unladen swallow? What, what do you mean? An African or a European swallow? I, I don't know that. Royanne 5000 asks, would you ever ride an aggressive hardtail as your main bike, Salsa Timberjack Yeti ARC? Second question, have you ever ridden single speed? I I don't know if I'd ride a hardtail as my main bike. I really enjoy riding full suspension mountain bikes. They are a ton of fun, but I have been riding this, which is a Salsa Cutthroat. It's supposed to be like a drop bar mountain bike, but a gravel bike, but I put flat bars on it and a dropper post and smaller tires. I've talked about it on this channel before and our podcast. It's kind of a weird, fully rigid, mountain bike but it's really lightweight i really enjoy riding that thing it's a weird bike i don't know try different bikes gravel bikes to me have been fun that bike in particular i do probably what i would do on a hardtail which is i'll put in a few road miles a few gravel miles some single track miles all in one big 15 mile ride uh, and it ends up being a really fun bike to ride and as far as a single speed, uh, I do have a single speed gravel bike out in Pennsylvania, but I recently put gears on it. Uh, you can see that here. Uh, that is another Salsa, the Storm Chaser. That was really fun to ride. I rode it on some mountain bike trails and some gravel trails, but single speed is it's just rough. You're just always, almost 99% always, of the time in the wrong gear. Uh, I have a single speed dirt jump bike, but yeah, I don't know. They're all bikes, they're all fun. Just ride whatever floats your boat. Grayson Adams, best clipless shoe and pedal combo for do it all trail riding. For the longest time, I have been riding Crank Brothers Mallet E pedals, and we once made a video all about how to set up Crank Brothers. Uh, pedals and cleats and get that all dialed in. It was a really long video, I made it a super long time ago. Check that out if you're interested. I'm, I've always been a fan of Crank Brothers pedals, Mallet E specifically, and I've always pretty much rode, uh, at least for the last few years here, 510 Kestrel lace shoes. I really like those. Prior to that, I actually had Mavic shoes, but they stopped making those. Now they just make a bunch of weird European style looking riding shoes. But my next pair of shoes, which I really want to get, are the new Crank Brothers shoes. They just came out with a whole line of mountain bike shoes that are made specifically to pair with their pedals, which is a brilliant idea, and they added a lot of cool features, and they look rad. Um, those are going to be my next shoes. I kind of avoid buying new shoes, because whenever you buy new shoes, you have to sort of break them in and like dig the rubber grooves where the pins are on the pedals. And you're actually supposed to be able to avoid that with Crank Brothers shoes because they're designed specifically for the pedal. So anyways, uh, that's probably my new go-to. Currently I'm still riding my 510 Kestrel laces and my Crank Brothers Mount E pedals. So check those out if you're interested for clipless stuff. William Work, Jeff. How long would it take a male harbor seal to swim up the Mississippi River with one flipper tied behind its back in the middle of winter during a leap year? Five and a half hours. By offering free shipping on all products, I'd imagine you lose money on a large portion of orders. From a business perspective, is free shipping all worth it in the long run? That's an extremely good question. Since day one of Worldwide Cyclery, we've offered free shipping on absolutely everything, uh, which means you can buy a single pair of brake pads or grips or chain lube or park poly lube um, for less than 25 bucks or 20 bucks or 15 bucks, and it still ships to you for free anywhere in the United States, including Hawaii and Alaska. 
yeah, we do lose money on some of those orders, but I think, I think there's, we don't really have a specific way to quantify this, but qualitatively, we think that holistically that adds to our customer experience of just making it easy for you as a mountain biker to buy things like a single pair of brake pads or grips or whatever, and not have to worry about paying shipping on any of that stuff. And then, yeah, hopefully you come back and enjoy your experience and then buy something more expensive and we make it up. So to me, yes, I do believe it's the right thing to do because our business has always been and always will be customer centric and we care about providing a good experience for the customer. And that's kind of a unique thing we do in our industry that has brought us to where we are. So hopefully that answers your question. I guess the answer is I'm not really sure. <laughs> What's your opinion on the Pirelli Enduro tires? They look interesting, and I don't know how well they would do on SoCal trails. Pirelli, which is a long time motocross tire manufacturer. I think they make a bunch of other tires too, but they're most well known, at least in my brain, as a motocross tire manufacturer. So all their dirt bike tires have been extremely good over the years. Now they're really starting to come into play with mountain bike tires and gravel bike tires, and the stuff looks really, really nice. And I just, have a lot of faith that they're going to be really good because they're just experts in tires that work in the dirt and tires that need a very particular compound and casing like a mountain bike tire would or a dirt bike tire would. Uh, I've only ridden some of their new tires on my current gravel bike. I just put a set on and I was very impressed with the rubber compound. I can't get their enduro tires yet. Uh, we have them on our site. We've got the whole array there, uh, but we don't have anything in stock yet. So if you're interested in Pirelli tires, I think they're going to be amazing. We'll definitely be talking about them on this channel in the future. But if you're curious, hit our website. Um, um, you can drop your email on any product page and be notified when they come back in stock. And hopefully it should be in the next month or two here uh, if you want to try a new tire brand. Pam Moore, thank you for your question and always being a positive commenter on our YouTube and Instagram stuff, Pam. Uh, she says, loving my tubeless setup. How do you know when you need to add more goo? Do you ever have to scrub out the old stuff and start over? A lot of people ask that about tubeless tires. Yes, the sealant inside does dry out. It usually dries out in about one to three months. Uh, there's variables that affect that. If it sits for a long time, like if it just, your bike sat there for an entire month, it would probably dry out. Um, but if you rode the bike at least once or twice a week, uh, then it would probably last about three months. Uh, maybe even a little bit longer. Sometimes if it gets super hot, uh, especially if you like leave your bike inside of a car, um, the sealant can then like coagulate, especially stands. Um, so yeah, usually one to three months, you do have to check your sealant and replace it. And when you do that, yeah, you gotta typically wipe out the old stuff and refresh it. Uh, you usually get like, depending on how often you're riding, two batches of sealant per tire, then you wear out your tire in about six months if you're riding a lot, depending on where you're riding. But yes, do replace your sealant. A lot of people have made the mistake of getting tubeless tires, putting sealant in there and thinking, oh, it's good to go forever. And then three months later, uh, you know, they get a thorn or a small slice and the sealant doesn't work and they're all pissed off about the sealant, but it's not really the sealant, it's just user error because you forgot to replace the sealant and keep it fresh. So there you go. Meg Dizia Cuburns asks, can you explain the Purple Yeti? Here is the Purple Yeti. And yes, I can explain that. Uh, that would be done by one of our very talented media guys named Rain Man. You can see him here. And he's good at Photoshop and he changes colors of things. Look at what he did with these revels. He made sports themed color revel frames. And he does a lot of other various things with his artistic talents, but that's how we made a purple Yeti. It doesn't really exist. Oh, and recently he made purple stanchions on Fox stuff. Look at that. Scooby-Doo 303, still in love with the Ranger. Anything you would trade to? Uh, yes, my current Rebel Ranger, I made a new bike day video when I built that thing. I am still in love with that bike. It works unbelievably well for most all of the mountain biking that I do. And it's just a good all around fast, light, efficient, proper trail bike that I really love. Anything I would trade to? I don't think I would trade, but I am considering building up a Salsa Blackthorn for like a longer travel park bike style thing for just like the more gnarly trails and bike parks for the summer. Um, I rode the Salsas a few months ago or maybe six months ago, whenever those things came out. And I was really impressed with that suspension platform and just their geo in general. And those things are just long travel, aggressive geo beasts. And so I'm excited to also build up one of those for the summertime. But yeah, currently still in love with the Ranger and it is not for sale yet, but it will be who knows at some point because I sell them all after I ride them for six to 10 months. Talk about some pet peeves that you have about MTB riders. Um, 
I don't have that many pet peeves about mountain bike riders. I think the only pet peeve I have is bad attitudes. I like people to be happy and fun and welcoming and enjoy themselves out on the trail and be friendly to other people. I think that that's a really important trait that mountain bikers can have towards each other and towards other mountain bikers on the trail and towards hikers and equestrians and everyone else. Be outside, have fun, respect people, make that a good situation out there and don't be rude or derogatory or on your high horse. Just ride mountain bikes and have fun and be nice to everyone out there. Do you think there is a future with Gearbox Technologies? We've been seeing at trade shows. Do you think linkage forks will catch on on the hardcore world of enduro and downhill riding? It's kind of good you ask both those questions in the same question because I think that those both fall into the same place. Linkage forks, like Trust Performance for example, and gearboxes, both of those in my opinion are superior technologies. They do work better than what exists. However, here's the issue. They work this much better and they cost this much more. The level of engineering that's gonna be put towards that and the acceptance and who's gonna actually pull out the wallet and pay this much for this much gain, it's just not the best business situation for gearboxes or linkage fork, which is why unfortunately you saw Trust Performance fizzle out and not work as a company, which was a total bummer because they did make a really cool product. And gearboxes, gearboxes have, people have been dabbling with gearboxes for years now, literally years, probably over a decade. Um, but they've just never caught on. And there's just a few limiting factors, in my opinion, most of which is that derailleur drivetrain systems still just work really good. Like they're just not bad. So you're not really solving a true problem. You're just slightly making something better, moving some weight, making a little bit more of a lot. Yeah, it's just hard to say that they're like this much better, but that much more expensive. So I don't know. I don't know if it'll ever catch on. I guess we will see. Would you ever think about making your own bike company and designing bikes? Uh, Actually, we did think about that pretty heavily a few years ago, really heavily, and we ended up deciding against it just because we didn't really think we could make anything that superior to what exists out there. And there's just so many good bikes already that it's really hard to compete in that space. And frankly, uh, after more thorough analysis, it's really not a good business model. Uh, the capital required to create a bike brand and just all of the money it takes to inventory bikes and frames and sell all of those. It's extremely capital intensive, logistically complicated, and just not a really good business model, especially given how competitive it is. Investors? Possibly you. Yeah, that's why we kind of abandoned ship on that idea. And actually then more fell in love with the apparel industry, which is kind of where Kettle Mountain came from. And we realized, ah, that's actually a way better business model, really still fits with our values. We have apparel expertise. We want to go in that industry. Um, it's a broader market. So yeah, we just saw that as a much better opportunity to sort of pivot and evolve and just go that direction, um, you know, instead of doing bikes. But yeah, we did consider that a while back. Last question from Adam CVW. Does Kettle Mountain make a jersey that will conceal my hashtag moobs effectively? Um, Put down the fork, face. <laughs> I don't think so. I think the wayward jersey might work. Definitely not the no fry sun hoodie because that's an extremely lightweight fabric and that might really show off your moobs, Adam. But the wayward might work. Maybe just size up. Um, I don't know. I, I, I haven't really thought about moob, moob concealing clothing. That could be a new, that's like paternity clothing, but for men, moobs concealing clothing. A brassiere for a man, <laughs> the man zig. I don't know, that's a weird topic. Anyways, if you've watched this long, thank you very much. I love you. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and check out our other stuff. Share this with your mountain bike friends and I will see you guys in the next video.